people last week and I realized my company is 32 years old and the vast majority of my staff and my customers are younger than my own company. It makes you feel really old when that happens. So we have changed all along the way. We started off with a desktop application training company. We moved into IT certification. We still do classroom, but we also, of course, went into e-learning, virtual training over the web, job aids, performance support systems. You know, you play with the tool out there, if you name it, you've got it. It's, it's all good. And they're all valuable, and they're all still needed in today's solutions. There's still going to be 20 more solutions we haven't even thought of yet that will come down the road that we'll all embrace when the time is right. But one thing that I experienced 35 years ago, and that's for myself, when I was just getting out of school, uh, I've seen happen a couple other times in recent years, and that's when someone can enter the IT field who's not on the IT track. So we talked about how do you fill the IT pipeline, and uh, Michael, you've got the, the high school internship program going, you tag, it's a fantastic thing. <coughs> I've seen kids that are from middle school, even, be, even earlier than middle school, who are definitely on an IT track, and you know that's where they're headed. I have two daughters, one's 25, one turns 20 in, in November. And neither one of them were on the IT track. They were not there. As much as I tried to push them on this thing, I said, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. I've got some professional help here for you. They wanted to no part of it. They did their own thing. But they had certain peers of theirs who were like, I was looking, I was like, oh my gosh, she is definitely IT. He is absolutely, he's going to be a, a massive mainframe programmer or a network engineer, or he's going to be designing the next storage system. You can tell at an early age who's going to have these, these skill sets. But if you go back to when IBM PCs first dropped on desks, and there weren't a lot of competition, right? The IBM PC came out, you had the little CPM machines on the side. You know, those, are, those terms we need anymore. But the people using those were not IT professionals. They were the user. They put the power of computing into the user's hand. And the people who were not on an IT track, not little bean cap wearing folks like myself, we would talk about the users, the accountants, the finance people. The administrators, they were learning how to use application software on these machines. They became, at one level, IT people. So if you look at the IT pipeline back then, there was a shortage back in the late 70s, early 80s of IT professionals, a huge shortage. It was a big problem for our country. But then a lot of the jobs that these IT folks were doing shifted over to the users because the users became empowered by having access to the PCs. And so suddenly that, that huge shortfall went away. It's okay. It's a good thing. It shifted jobs that were IT specific over to the users. I've seen also individual users who have shifted into the more high end tech. I want, I'll give you two examples. But my question for the group at my table I'd like to talk about is how do you find alternative means to move someone who's not on the traditional IT path into the IT professional world? So two, two quick examples on that and I'll shut up so Paul can get us happily back on schedule. Um, okay. I, I had a, an office, we were, we were building out uh, a new office space, and there was a contract cable puller you know, on a ladder, pulling cables to the ceiling, dropping down the walls, putting into our network. And when they came back to the server room, you know, he, he couldn't touch the servers, that was not his job, he's a cable puller. He had high, high school education and no more. He was early 30s. And uh, he, he'd pull the heels back and he had to label them all and tone them out. And then we had the IT professionals hook them up to the switches and the servers and all this great stuff. And, and he was there for about three weeks because we had a pretty big project there. And one of his questions finally was like, well, why am I getting barely above minimum wage and you're getting paid so much money? I'm really getting paid a lot for what you're doing here. I, what, what do you know that I don't know? And it's like, well, I've been trained in this training, this certification, blah, blah, blah. He goes, well, how hard can that be? And they're like, well, it's just a lot of work and all. So this guy came up to one of my managers and said, you, you guys teach what, what they're doing in there. Can I, can I sit in a class? I'm like, yeah, why not? Oh, we don't care. Um, you know, we, people pay lots of money for the classes. That's all fine and good. But here's a nice guy. Let him sit in a class. He, he sat in a couple of days of class. He came back and, and he asked for a meeting with me. He says, I want to become one of your employees. I, I want to take some classes here. He ended up, I let him sit through classes for free. He had to pay for his own certification exams. But I let him take some classes for free on a scholarship, call it what you will. And he is now a Microsoft certified professional. He's a manager of folks at Hewlett Packard, working in their uh, Microsoft, I'm oh, sorry, HP Education Services group. He's managing about 400 servers and a lot of folks running. And he, and he started this thing in the early 30s. 
with the, why do I have to keep pulling cables? He was not on the track for IT, but he, he made it. the more, tr almost more traditional route, uh, I've, for about the last 13, 14 years, I've been working with University of Georgia and the Grady School of Journalism, also the hotbed of IT sources, right? That's where, <laughs> that's where all GE hires come from, hire the marketing and advertising. And not tech at all, it's all tech. No, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And so what they have done, they, they realized a lot of their grads weren't getting jobs. Yeah, the anthropology majors, well, that's tough enough, but even when you get people my daughter's anthropology major, yes. <laughs> she had to start running business. One. She had to start running business she's doing her right. Thank you. But uh, you, you have um, journalism majors in, in Georgia, and they weren't getting jobs. And so one of the professors there said, you know what, we need to teach, teach them the skills. It's not just how to do graphic design, not just how to do marketing and advertising. Let's give them the technology skills that goes with this so they don't have to hire the, the folks, the IT folks to do the work for them. So he created a certificate program on top of the degree program. So anyone who's getting a degree over there in journalism can also get what's called a New Media Institute certificate. They graduate about 150 students a, a year in this program, with this certificate program. And the students learn how to code. They learn how to you know, websites. They, do S, they learn SEO. They learn how to write apps on phones. They learn how to program drones to go out and map areas. They've got all kind of crazy projects going on. Um, and they have a 100% success rate. It's not 95, 100% success rate with the graduates of this program having a full-time job within three months of graduation. And that's pretty strong. That's, that's, that's something they can boast about. Now you go to the rank and file journalism school graduates, not anywhere, <laughs> nowhere near that, yes. But they're really proud of the students in this program. They work very hard. I've been mentoring a lot of these students. Um, in fact, there's a group of them who some are graduates now, a couple of students are still in the program. They form their own consulting company, so they're doing media consulting. And they are in the IT space. And you would call them IT professionals. Uh, it's, look, look them up sometime on the website, techiecollective.com. They're, they're a bunch of folks got together. It was one of their, their capstone projects at the end of, the, end of their semester project. And I, I talked about it. I said, you know what? You guys are really wasting an opportunity. Don't, don't make it one semester project and walk away. Monetize this. And I, I helped talk them through it. And they've got their business set up, and they're running. They, they only launched this year, earlier this year. They've had a couple of clients under their belt they're finished with, and they're doing great now. They're, they're, uh, they're knocking it out. So there's alternate ways to get people in the pipeline. It doesn't have to be the traditional Georgia Tech method. They're a great school. You guys will run the cloud computing and all the really brain stuff, and we'll let the little Georgia guys do the web coding. <laughs>